Question mark Hospital Pharmacy Orientation Guideline Introduction to Hospital Pharmacy Pharmacists who practice in hospital often have very different roles to pharmacists who work in the community. Hospital pharmacy departments may vary greatly in the different services they provide dependent on their size. A large metropolitan hospital may employ many pharmacists and pharmacy support staff and deliver a broad range of services e.g. sterile manufacturing insight to toxic reconstitution. In comparison, a small rural hospital pharmacy department may only have one or two pharmacists on site. Hospital pharmacy departments usually supply medication to both inpatients and outpatients. Due to the demand for acute care in the home environment to ease pressure on hospital beds, pharmacy departments sometimes supply medications for patients treated at home rather than in hospital e.g. intravenous antibiotics and low molecular weight heparin following high-risk surgery. In addition to the supply of medications, hospital pharmacists have important clinical roles in the dispensary, on the wards and sometimes in some outpatient or perioperative clinics. What do you think are the main roles of a pharmacist who works in the hospital setting? How do these differ from a community pharmacist? Which of these roles are common to both? Question mark What do you believe to be the essential services that a hospital pharmacy department provides? Hospital pharmacists often work as part of a multidisciplinary team focused on patient-centered care. There are many different health professionals who will have input into a patient's care whilst in hospital. Name FOUR health professionals, apart from the pharmacist, who may be involved in looking after a patient during their stay. Give a brief summary of what you think their role might be. Pharmacy Department Structure and Roles each hospital pharmacy department is different but all have one common aim, to ensure that all patients who come into their institution receive the best possible pharmaceutical care and ensure the quality use of medicines. The hospital pharmacy may contain different sections that perform specific functions e.g. the dispensary, medicines information or there may be satellite pharmacies linked to the department. How many staff does the pharmacy department you are at have? What is the management structure and hierarchy within the department? List all the different types of staff that exist in the department and what their usual role is. Identify all the individual sections of the department and describe the major functions of each section. How many staff members work in each section? What are the roles of the relevant staff members who work there? For example, in the dispensary setting, what are the roles of the pharmacists compared to any technicians or assistants? How do you think the roles and responsibilities of a pharmacy technician working in the hospital compares to one who works in the community setting? What differences might there? Procurement of medications, budgeting and stock control public hospitals often buy medication in very large quantities, particularly medications which are used frequently on the wards and in theatres. Most of the medications purchased are on contract. Exceptions exist if brands are not by all equivalent. This means that the public hospitals can often negotiate good deals with the pharmaceutical companies and wholesalers. Each hospital usually has a formulary of medications that may be used. If prescribers wish to initiate drugs for patients that are not on the formulary or are for off-label use, they should provide evidence as to why this is the case. Question mark Each hospital has an allocated drug budget for the year. Some medications used in the hospital are classed as special access scheme, SAS, drugs. Look at how the stock is procured in the hospital. What is the system for ordering stock and who is responsible? How do they know what needs to be ordered? How is the drug budget managed in the hospital you are based in? What happens if they go over budget? What does the term off-label use mean? How does the pharmacy department manage the prescribing and funding of Section 100 IS medications? Briefly describe the system for the supply of drugs under the SAS scheme. Name FOUR drugs commonly used in your hospital that are included in this scheme and indicate why they may have been prescribed. How does the pharmacy access drugs from overseas? Drug distribution. Public hospitals organize the distribution of medications to both inpatients and outpatients. Some hospitals have a separate dispensary area or pharmacy for outpatients, whilst some hospitals dispense all medications for inpatients and outpatients from the same location. 
supply of medications to hospital and patients. Most hospitals utilize a dual system of dispensing for patients on the wards, ward stock and individual patient dispensing. Each ward may have a selection of medications that it will keep as ward stock. For those medications that are not issued via ward stock, each item must be dispensed to an individual patient from the National Inpatient Medication Chart, NIMC. Recently, some hospitals have rolled out emits. The ward pharmacist is usually responsible for maintaining the supply of these non-stock, or non-impressed, medications. Patients in hospital are often prescribed schedule 4 DNS-8 medications such as benzodiazepines and morphine. Question mark There are many medications used in hospitals that are not usually dispensed by community pharmacists. Can you think of FOUR medications that are commonly used in the hospital setting? For each medication, give an indication of their possible use. Discharge medications. When patients are discharged from hospital, there is usually a system in place that will ensure the ongoing supply of medication for patients when they go home. Most hospitals have their own discharge prescription form or procedure that they use. Supply of medications to outpatients. Most hospitals supply medications to patients who have seen a doctor in the outpatient clinic or sometimes from specialized GPS. What medications are commonly supplied to outpatients at the hospital you are based in for your placement? For your own information, make a note of what these medications are usually used for. Clinical pharmacist roles and responsibilities There are increasing expectations that hospital pharmacists will provide an expanded clinical service in line with increasing health care demands and the need to minimize medication risks, promote evidence-based practice and optimize patient health outcomes. There are also some quick guides available on the website on medication reconciliation and assessing current medication management, clinical review, therapeutic drug monitoring and adverse drug reactions amongst others. Different hospitals may have a different approach as to how the pharmacists provide a patient-focused clinical service. Some hospitals may have a dedicated medication safety pharmacist. Clinical pharmacy services may include the following. Medication reconciliation. Medication reconciliation is the process of comparing the medication history with prescribed medications to ensure accurate and complete medication information transfer with the aim of improving patient safety. It involves compiling the best possible medication history via a structured interview or confirmation of the medication history with at least one other source or reconciliation with admission slash discharge medication orders. Assessment of current medication management. Question mark It is important that a pharmacist assesses the medication chart to ensure all medications are prescribed clearly and legally with no ambiguity. They also need to think about the following areas. Do all medications have an indication for use? Is it off-label use? Is the prescription appropriate with respect to the five rights of medication administration? Right patient, dose, drug, route and time. Have all medications been prescribed according to best practice guidelines and local policy guidelines? If any dosage form manipulation is needed, have the steps been taken to ensure this is appropriate e.g. crushing medications or are there any drug interactions with other drugs, disease states or food? Are there any contraindications to the medications? Allergies. Is the dose appropriate? Is it available? Is it on the formulary? Clinical review. Pharmacists also take into consideration patients' clinical parameters, symptoms, pathology results and clinical test results in order to monitor their progress and assess the suitability of in response to the medication they have been prescribed. Therapeutic drug monitoring. Some drugs have a narrow therapeutic window and as such their plasma levels may need to be closely monitored to avoid subtherapeutic or toxic levels. Pharmacists often advise on sampling times and interpretation of results. Adverse drug reaction management. Clinical pharmacists are involved in recognizing, preventing and advising on management of adverse drug reactions, particularly with certain medications and patient groups who are at greater risk. Providing medicines information. This may include patient counseling using verbal or written information and also providing information and advice on the use of medications to other healthcare professionals in the multidisciplinary team. 
facilitating continuity of medication management on discharge or transfer taking part in interdisciplinary ward rounds and meetings the ward pharmacist is an important member of the multidisciplinary health care team and where possible should be involved in team meetings and rounds. Question mark clinical pharmacists may also participate in research, quality improvement activities and provide education and training for other health professionals, students and pharmacy interns. Patients who are usually most at risk of medication-related problems and may include the following. Admitted to hospital with a drug-related problem elderly patients over 65 years. Patients taking multiple medications, either more than 5 medications or 12 doses per day taking a high-risk medication, a pinch, or medication with a narrow therapeutic window. Lots of changes to medications in the weeks before admission adherence issues. Treatment failure. Difficulty managing medications Recent discharge from hospital patients with abnormal kidney and liver function It is very important that pharmacists document their activities and recommendations appropriately using a spur clinical handover to ensure that any issues and interventions are effectively communicated to the treating team and any other health professional involved in medication management. This may be done utilizing a medication management plan, MMP. What does the term medication reconciliation mean? Why is this important in minimizing medication risk and optimizing health outcomes? Name three sources of a best possible medication history. What are the possible limitations of each source you identify? Some medications are classed as high risk because if a medication incident or error occurs, comma, the consequences may be severe for the patient. What does the acronym a pinch mean? One of the roles of a clinical pharmacist is medication chart annotation. Why do you think this is important? Question mark When the pharmacist is assessing a patient's renal function, they often calculate their creatinine clearance using the Cockroft-Gault equation. Why is this used for calculating drug doses? Identify FIV drugs that may need dose adjustment if renal function is compromised. Name FOUR drugs that usually require therapeutic drug monitoring. Why? Does the hospital have an antimicrobial stewardship pharmacist? What role do they play in QUM and why? What do we mean by the term DUE? What DUE activities has the pharmacy department recently been involved with? In order to maximize the clinical services that the pharmacy can provide, pharmacists might utilize the pharmacy support staff to help with this. Pharmacy assistants and technicians with appropriate qualifications Training and experience are potentially able to clinically support pharmacists in many ways. This may include communicating with community pharmacists to assist with medication reconciliation or gathering pathology data to assist with clinical review of patients. This technician clinical support role is constantly evolving.